Well, they attach, does it? Yeah. No. I just have to lay it on. So, Peter, I think the biggest issue of this movement is getting getting Americans. Um, I think a lot about this music, this movement, is getting the people out on the streets. Yes, right. That, to me, is the essence of this. If we can't rally the people and get them out on the streets, this is one massive communication project. Right. So, what do you think? What would you recommend as ways to do that to effectively communicate with the people, the citizens of, of not only the United States but the world? What's the most effective way to get them out here and to support this movement? Do you think? Well. That's a huge question. You can look at it from the sense of strategy, like films and live streams and all of that stuff. Or you can look at it from the perception of what is the most strategic way to actually engage people's values and get them interested. So I think the latter is more important. I mean, obviously, we all know the general route of communication. And we're all doing a very good job of it, I think, as well. That's why I make films. That's why I do town halls and things like that. But the strategy of communication is to try to find ways to relate to as many people as possible. So right. that's very difficult for right. all of us to work in line. Right. So I wouldn't communicate myself the same way if I went to, you know, a very impoverished Brazilian town. Sure. I would try to hone in the values that they see, hone in on traditional characteristics right. they can identify with. So one of the flaws in my own communications, I, I tend to be, I tend to be uh, overly, you know, overly verbose. <laughs> I tend to be overly intellectual sometimes. I always collar myself, and I try my best to stop that. So it's recognizing right. things within yourself to make things more communicable to the largest possible demographic that you, that you can acquire. And that's no set, there's no set rules for that. Right. The, 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 the interesting thing about what's happening now, it's not just a communication project for us, it's also the recognition of the biosocial pressures that are emerging that are forcing people to actually think about their surroundings. If everyone had the white picket house, white picket fence house, and, and the little nine to five, and their you know, middle class income, and their, their, you know, their two and a half kids, very few people would even engage the political system. They would feel relatively satisfied, but because the inefficiency of these systems have become so vast, everyone's beginning to wake up to something. And to me, I'm trying to get my message out there, or the message of the movement out there more specifically, the logic of what it means to truly be economical, which means to actually meet the needs of the human population. It means to actually create good public health scientifically and what that denotes. You use that as the strategy to, to pull away from all the confusion that, that might arise from them as they begin to awaken their awareness to the pressures that are hitting them. Does that make sense? Yes, that so makes sense. So it's about a strategic focus of what's actually important. Yeah. Now, people debate me on that, obviously, sure. in many, sure. Sure. but uh, that's how I focus it, which is why the talk I gave was so specific to what it was, as the root cause, because if people want to keep yelling about you know social reform and political institutions, or they're angry at the upper 1%, it's not going to really do anything, because they're actually yelling at symptoms, not the root cause. So, given the situation that we're in right now, what do you think the likelihood is that we could truly get the majority, the vast majority of Americans behind this movement? Very high. Very high. Well, the movement will morph. The movement will change. We have to remember, things will constantly change. In the future, there might be no such thing as the Zeitgeist movement. There might be no such thing as Occupy. These things will morph and twist into basically a new value system. The value system itself is what will redefine culture. It will set in motion. All of those structural changes that will enable the peace and humanity and survival that we all aspire to. So, the change really has to be a train of thought. We can't get too, too caught up in institutions. We can't get too caught up in this institution versus that institution. Or I'm for, you know, even like you use the example of Republicans and Democrats, we can't get caught up in those dualities. Sure. Because the train of thought will continue to morph. And as the system fails, and I'm convinced that this system is failing, I don't, well, I think it's been failing for a long time. Sure. The very fact that a billion people are starving on the planet shows that it's been failing ever since right. the first person started starving. Right. right. So the system's in a massive downward slide on multiple levels, and uh, the jobs are not coming back. All of these things are going to continue to present themselves, and that's where the true pressure will manifest, and that's where the value system will originate that will create the next level of change and the next level of helping move into a truly sustainable economic model. So looking at sort of some sort of time frame, obviously, I would say in the last 10 years, things have gotten considerably worse. Obviously, they've been moving in this direction for many, many years. Exponential. What do you think the timeline is for this major shift that we all think is possible, that we feel like it's coming? What, do, what would you think the time frame is? I used to, about two years ago, it was actually a different world. I was amazed at the imbalance of it. And now all of us would think to ourselves, well, the imbalance is pretty bad. But the type of values that need to change, the 
type of the disassociation of all the things that continue to support this system, which is really what underlies it, really. The educational values, the need for success, material abundance, or the idea that we can all have the American dream in a 50 room mansion and two jets parking the front lawn. This is really the problem, but it's born out of the system and reinforced. So, two years ago, we said to ourselves, man, it's going to take a generation or two. But now, I'm starting to change that view. I could see severe changes happening within a decade. I could see massive governmental effects occurring where they say, okay, we're going to create mass food production systems off the coast of Los Angeles, vertical farming, we're going to desalinization from the ocean, and we're going to create an automated system that makes this free. And we're going to feed everybody in Los Angeles, forget the economic growth system for now, but we'll keep maintaining it in pockets. We begin to, we begin to balance and transition. And I've thought of writing, you know, step-by-step -step plans to how the socioeconomic system could literally transition to a free economy using the ability of abundance we have, removing the distorted values and the scarcity that's inherent that drives the system. So that can happen very rapidly, but it's going to take... It's going to take a while to override, get okay. past that first hump. But I can see something happening within 10 to 20 years. I think it's possible something very, very dramatic could happen. Okay, do you see these changes coming from within the structure that currently exists in this country? Or do you see that this movement's going to be so strong that the shift is going to come from within outside the existing structure base? I see it two ways. I, I see the initial change happening from the grassroots level, not from the existing structure. I don't see the politicians or, or the lobbyists, obviously, or any of the corporate powers taking hold of this message and this value until it's basically the force of the public, the public is so large they have no choice. Second, though, I don't want to see complete and utter social breakdown. I don't want to see our infrastructure be destroyed. I don't want to see everything be let go to such a degree where it takes us that much longer to rebuild. So what I'd like to see is a step-by-step -step element I just mentioned where certain governmental policies are in set. And they might not like it, but at least they're, they're forced to do something that can perhaps, say, begin to feed, perhaps, say, create infrastructure subsidations, perhaps even, say, cut the work week in half for half the population so that the other half can become employed. Things that were actually proposed in history, but the marketary model, model it's, it's, it's anathema to that. They don't right. think about it that way. They can't. It's right. completely against what the ethos of the market system is. Right. But that's going to have to be pushed. Pushed and more. Is it going to be easy? No. But I do hope, I hope that that will happen. I'm not sure if it will. Sure. It might take a complete collapse and the table will be completely wiped right. clean. Right. And you'll be able to step and just start again. Right. From a very crude and horrible beginning. But yeah. So I'm sure you've heard a lot in the last couple of weeks about these idea of demands. Are we going to make demands? When are we going to make demands? What are those demands going to consist of? Me personally, and I think a lot of other people feel like those demands at this point in time are too premature. But the system is so corrupted at every level that making a couple specific demands will set the movement back. How do you feel about that? That's the biggest point. And in fact, kind of why I'm here in the sense of what this community asks for, what this community basically pushes into the public mind as far as values, again, what the educational imperative of this community really is, that's really what we are. We're here, we obviously have to educate ourselves and continue to develop and be emergent, but we really have to push what the public needs to understand, to get them to see the problem. Right. But the problem has to be correctly identified, and the things that are demanded need to be as acute as possible so they can be shared by as many people as possible, not only in the country, but also across the world. Right. If you can get a set of unified value demands, if you will, yes that are so harmonious amongst the global community, then they'll have a, a possibility of taking hold. But I noticed, you know, in Occupy New York, they say things like, well, we demand uh, to stop all foreclosures or things like that. that that's, that's bypassing the mechanisms of the system. You have to actually go for the causality within the system and correct the causality. So the issue of foreclosures is actually a symptom of the sure. larger cancer, the sure. larger flaw.